Welcome to the Nonprofit Exchange Podcast. Stories by leaders for leaders to help you raise the bar on your own excellence to release the potential inside of you. Now, here's today's podcast. It's Hugh Ballou. Welcome to the Nonprofit Exchange. We got almost 350 episodes. We're clocking them off and everyone has been very different. So we're going to talk about Oh, it's a fascinating topic today. Beyond dancing in your pajamas, how to really use videos for your business or your nonprofit. Carl Kwan, he's uh, from Canada, but um, he's got a wealth of knowledge. So Carl, start out by telling people a little bit about yourself, your background, and why do you do this work? So about myself. So I started out as an executive presentations coach. And what I found was that what you learn from teaching people how to speak well, how to communicate the right message to the right audience, how to present yourself well, how to understand what the goal is as opposed to just wanting to spit out whatever it is you want to spit out to whoever it is you're talking to, all of those things translate into video and how we use videos nowadays. When I first started out back in 2009 with the videos and doing this presentations thing, it was really different. And it was just sort of the, the start of how businesses, nonprofits, whatever it might be, were starting to use video because the production, the cost, were, were all coming down. And being able to create something on your own became something very feasible. However, the problems that exist are that people just don't know what to do they continue to look at video as either something that it should be a huge big production or they look at it in terms of okay i need to make something that just shouts at people and it doesn't work that way at all and so that's where my background as that executive presentations coach also with background in broadcasting with radio and tv and voice acting as well and a background in business all sort of came together to say hey look we can actually help people understand how to use videos in their business, in the nonprofit, whatever it might be, as an effective sales and marketing tool, rather than something that just, that we think traditional video is. From those humble beginnings, I started a YouTube channel, and that channel has now grown to over 108,000 subscribers to this day, I believe now. And so for me personally, I can see the power of video, and I see how other people are trying to use it, but they're not quite there in terms of understanding how they should be implementing it for themselves as opposed to what they have traditionally been taught how to do it or what they think is the right way to do it. And so that's what's led me to, to I guess, have this conversation with you as well, to shed some light, I suppose, on, on how videos should be best utilized. Absolutely. It's sort of like leadership. Everybody knows how it should go, but somehow it doesn't get the results we want. So video is immensely a popular now and so i see videos everywhere and there's just a, a large um live streaming now on twitter of course instagram there's there's the reels and um youtube i guess is is a really powerful search engine so is a video a video or are you we creating videos for specific platforms I, we'll talk about a specific audience in a minute but does it vary by platform it absolutely does. And I'm glad you mentioned YouTube because like you said, it is the huge search engine, second largest in the world owned by Google. But what's really unique about YouTube versus all the other platforms is that the algorithms for YouTube are actively trying to find content to serve to an audience for their own you know, self-interest because they earn money from the advertising. But the no other platform will help you be found. They will not try to see, okay, if you're making videos about nonprofits and leadership and things like that, how can we find an audience for that content? How can we look at what the stats are for those views that you're getting and try and find an audience that fits that? Not only that, but now if you develop a, a library of content on YouTube, it's easily searchable. It's easily found. There are videos that I made 10 years ago that still get 11,000 views every single month. And it's that, and it doesn't, that wouldn't happen on any other platform other than YouTube. So when you mention YouTube, yes, videos for YouTube are a little bit different 
because they're not like going onto Facebook where you're maybe just trying to catch up with friends or see what's going on in the news with Twitter uh, or with Instagram, just kind of seeing, you know, cute animals and, and your friends vacations or whatever. When you go to YouTube, you're kind of there for entertainment, but also to learn something as well. So that's why that platform is still so powerful and still the place that you, you know, every organization really needs to start with and then branch out from there. So if I want to know how to, I usually go to YouTube and put in how to, or even if I just do a Google search, it's going to take me to YouTube. And so you're right. There's just lots of how to do this and how to do that. And pretty much if it doesn't exist there, it doesn't exist. It's just like, so how does it know? Um, is there a secret? I mean, you got the really good video, but the search engines don't read the video. Is it the, is it the text or the keywords or, or what? They did start reading the videos. Uh, they actually do have a way to look at what the content is because obviously how would they know if you are using words that are inappropriate as an example, right? They're able to, they're able to transcribe everything you're saying now, whenever you go into video, if someone hasn't uploaded a transcription, if you click on the little closed captioning icon, they automatically will, will, will caption the video in multiple languages as well. You could put it into French, you could put it into Italian, you could put it into Chinese, whatever it is, it will come up. It may not be 100% accurate, but it's pretty darn close where you could understand what's going on. So they absolutely know what your content is. And when you upload it, they will try to figure out, okay, what category does this fit into? What audience does it fit into? They'll test it with different audiences and to see what will work best. And of course, you do need to be consistent with uploading. Otherwise, they may not care that you have this video. But if you start uploading some content consistently, the quality of it is quite good in terms of what you're trying to communicate, maybe the production value. And they look at all the little signals from their algorithm, how long someone watches for, how, how you know, where do they maybe watch it again? Will they come back? Do they subscribe? All these different factors that go into the video, they look at. And so absolutely, they know what's going on. And so that's why videos are served up to you, especially once you start watching YouTube for a little bit, they start picking up on, you know, what you like, what you, what you prefer, and they start showing those on the homepage of your, of your YouTube feed. So they've got this secret algorithm that looks for all these things and, and, and promotes the content. So if like, I'm going to stream this interview, we're doing this live today and there are people are seeing it on Facebook. But um, I will restream it on Thursday and to all five different platforms and YouTube was included there. So as I restream it, I'll put in some keywords, but I'll have the narrative about who Carl is and what we're doing. But you're telling me the video itself is going to generate some traffic. Absolutely. And just like, you know, every video on YouTube has the same opportunity to be seen by the same audience. So whether you are someone that has a, a small number of subscribers, it's your first video, maybe even, there are ways that if you, if you make the video properly or if you figure out you know, how to do this and you work on it and, and, and really try to figure out what is gonna be best for your audience, you have just as good of a chance to be seen on you know, at the top of any of these results as someone like I don't know, Mr. Beast or one of these really popular young kids that do all this YouTubing stuff and they're seen everywhere. So the platform itself is, I guess, there's equal opportunity for anybody. So there's, there's really no reason why you shouldn't be on YouTube and to put your content, like you said, onto there as well and you know, put in whatever you need in terms of the, the thumbnail, the title, the descriptions. And people are, will see it and they'll, they'll make a quick decision whether or not they want to watch the video. So, you know, absolutely there's a way to make them visible to everybody. So some platforms I understand give more visibility and promote content for people who pay for ads. So you're telling me that's not exactly true for YouTube. Right, exactly. So with YouTube, you, like I said, it's an equal opportunity platform. If you are making something about dog harnesses as an example you want you, you you have a fascination with dog harnesses for whatever reason so you collect them you make them you talk about them all you think about are dog harnesses and what youtube will do is they'll think okay well this person is really into this maybe it's a diy type of other person that could be an interested audience in this 
Maybe it's someone who just loves pets and loves dogs just as much as this person. So they might try and promote your content to these, to these other people, to these audiences. And so based on that, you're able to see your analytics every single month and go, oh, hmm, look at that. I see that people are being recommended my channel. And I see that they're watching this much of this video. This video is more interesting to them. They're watching more of it. And so you're able now to say, okay, hmm, should I focus only on the dog harnesses or should I focus in on dog health tips or you know, training or things that our people are really interested in? So then you're able to grow, sort of develop your channel and develop your content to the point where you're getting more consistent traffic where YouTube sees, oh, this person's continuing to work on these videos are getting better and better in terms of their audience retention, the click throughs to the videos, how much people are watching, you know, all these different factors they, that they take into consideration and they serve up the video to even more people or serve your channel up to even more people. As an example, I have a math teacher who started his YouTube channel maybe I think three months ago. And what we noticed was that we would work with him and say, okay, here are the videos, we've made the videos for you. And we will analyze the stats every single month and see what's going on. And what we noticed was that about 85, 87% of all his views were coming from YouTube recommendations. Right. That, that's how that's how powerful YouTube is when they see that you're producing something for a very specific audience that could be valuable. And he was able to get business from these videos as well. People were, you know, he, he got a client out of it who because of his he has a he has ADHD and he's a, he's a math tutor. He's, he's he did really well in school and he was able to attract an audience for you know his content. So it does work. It does take some time to make it work. But overall, if you if you if you work at it, it will repay you. So stay at it. So there's um, there's the area of PR, public relations, which in my mind is your brand recognition, your identity. Then there's the area of marketing, where you're you're specifically trying to generate leads. You want you want actions, and then you can get a lot of actions, but you can't if you don't close any sales, like donors or board members. So there's a sales piece of it. So where in those spheres of influence do you work? So for myself, what I do is I, I, I look at all those areas and I, and that's how we, we think about video marketing. And so maybe that's a good transition into what I do and how YouTube actually plays into this as well, because with YouTube, you, it actually will allow you to put your, your website link onto everything, or you're able to use it as a promotion tool as well. And the great thing about the YouTube videos is that they give you the authority and they give you the awareness where people can then be transitioned off of YouTube over to your landing page, over to your donor platform, whatever it might be, because they've already built a relationship with you from there. And so what I then look at is, okay, sure, great. We, we have been able to build some awareness. People know what you're doing, or we can say, hey, look, let's be more specific with strategy in terms of, okay, what do we want? Do we just we want a certain type of audience that comes specifically for your type of nonprofit that is interested in your particular cause? How do we get them over to your sales and landing pages? Then we look at what are the messages we need on your landing page? Do we need testimonials from other people? Do we need to answer questions? How do we continue to foster the relationship? And so that's where video becomes incredibly powerful, but it's often done wrong or incorrectly because we approach it from our own perspective of this is what I think people want to hear as opposed to what do they actually want to hear. And, and like you said, it's like, it's like leadership as well. You have to kind of really understand who it is you're talking to before you can guide them. And it's the same with sales and marketing. We need to have a, a, that message really clear. So for me, for my business, it's always focused on what is the right message for the right audience as opposed to let's just make the video look great. It doesn't really get any traction. That's where most people or most organizations, when they talk to a videographer or a video production company, they approach it from, let's just make it look great. What do you want to say? Okay, yeah, I think we kind of get that. And we'll try and make it as creative or as, you know, fancy, whatever, whatever term you might want to have, but it may not have the substance to let, to get someone to move to the next step. And then what's the next step after that? And what's the next step after that? So that's what we do in terms of video marketing is to, is to figure those things out. If you're looking at us on Facebook or another platform, this is the nonprofit exchange. Um, we interview an expert every week about a topic that nonprofit leaders and clergy were working in the same space of impacting people's lives. And um, our guest today is Carl Kwan and his 
expertise is way above what I know about video video marketing. So you've you've split it into different elements. So you've seen a lot of bad videos. I don't care what platform you see a lot. So what are some of the biggest mistakes people make? I mean, you talked about one, let's make it pretty, but we're, we're talking to ourselves and we're not talking to a specific audience. And that's pretty common. Mm, right. But the biggest mistake is that most organizations think that they need one video. That'll be the silver bullet that makes everything else happen. And if it's in the case of nonprofits or clergy, maybe it's the, you know, it rains money to them or, or, you know, whatever it might be, you know, it, it's not, it's not the, it's typically not just one video that will do it. And this happens in, it's not just nonprofits that have that this happens to it's for profits, whatever. I see it all the time where you watch the video and you just know that this person, this organization spent a lot of money to produce something that unfortunately doesn't have the right message doesn't communicate what they do exactly very clearly and doesn't have a really good call to action and also we need to think as well the other mistake is assuming that okay since i made the video you know it's like feel the dreams if i build it they will come it doesn't work that way because imagine if you if you shot this video put it on your website and my question is always how do you get people to your website you know if you don't have anyone come to your website well what's the point of having the video so now we go back a little bit further you know, in the, in the process and say, okay, look, maybe we need to build some awareness for your website. Maybe you need to do some digital marketing and get some, you know, either do advertising, whatever it might be. Use YouTube to build a following, to build awareness that way. Use the other platforms to build that funnel of people to your website. And then that video might work, you know, on its own. But if you don't have anyone there, it doesn't really do anything. So that's a, that's probably the biggest mistake is assuming that one video will solve all the problems without no, without understanding how people will actually see it and what you're trying to say and what you want people to do. Yeah. It's like seeing the same ad repeatedly, the 15 second ad on TV that keeps playing and you say, you turn it off after a while. You just, I've seen that. I don't, I don't care about it. And, and the other thing that I think about is if you're doing multiples, that's what we would call top of mind marketing. People see you now they're not, when they first see you, they may not need what you offer. But if it's top of mind, it's like you, I look at a tire ad. I don't, I don't need tires, so what's the deal? But when I need tires, I'm going to think about the last tire ad I saw. So, um, is there any any secret to frequency of posting? You know, variety of content I'm hearing, but how about variety and and frequency and length? I mean, sometimes they can be way too long. Yeah, absolutely. So. You know, in terms of frequency, again, it really depends on your audience. It depends on what stage you are in terms of how much your audience is actually contributing to your goals, your overall business goals, uh, your overall goals as a, as, a, as a nonprofit and as a clergy. You need to think about, okay, well, if I already have a huge audience, I don't, probably don't need to publish as many things as often. As long as they're good quality, I'll probably get the same reaction to them. But if you're just starting out, no one knows about you, it's really important to post more regularly. And regularly, I would say three times a week, if you're trying to post to social media, to YouTube, probably at least once a week. And something that once a week, mainly because you're able to determine whether or not the video works. You can see after week after week, whether the video is working, how to change it and tweak it, as opposed to producing a whole bunch of things and none of them work. So and then in, ter in terms of the length, nowadays, it's important to have shorter videos for the shorter platforms, even the YouTube shorts, the Instagram reels, which are really huge and have that content there. But also maybe that is that has been repurposed from a longer, bigger video that you had on YouTube already. And so that video now, again, it, it, it depends on, you know, what you're trying to say and, and, and how much you need to say. I always think that the video should be as long as it needs to be, which means that if you do have 10 things to say, and they're really important, then great, say those 10 things. But within those 10 things, maybe you use a lot of filler words, maybe you'd say things over and over that isn't that aren't important. Maybe you, yeah, at some point, the audience dropped off, you know, after the first minute, or after the first, you know, you see that the, the audience graph just suddenly tails off. So you need to adjust. And so at that point, you think, oh, okay, hmm, 10 things was too much, let's try three. And well, I'll make several videos with three things. And let's see how the how that works there. 
same thing with the shorter videos as well, the shorter content. There's a client of mine right now who it's an animal hospital and we are producing short content, which is informational. And we notice that it gets a huge spike because it's very breed specific as opposed to the more general things get very, you know, very few in terms of the interaction and very little interaction or engagement. So it's, again, it's just like experimenting with what is going to work and recognizing that, okay, there are trends or whatever as well. So as an example, at the end of videos, we usually used to say, thanks for watching, you know, please like, and subscribe, things like that. But that is actually gone out the window. You don't do that anymore. What you try to do at the end of videos now is say, but if you've already, if, but if you're interested in this, or, but if you think this is really great, check out this other video that we've made about something else. And so you're trying to put that call to action, which is very direct into another video. So, you know, things like that, where you just kind of, uh, th there's no right answer, but at the same time, it's, you need to do everything to see what will work. And obviously, depending on your time and your, your, your resources to do those things, oftentimes it's easier to find someone like myself or someone who is an expert to say, yeah, here's how you do it, rather than fumbling around trying to make it work on your own. So there are ways to make it work, but it's just a matter of, I guess, you know, finding the right, the right method and the right system for, for your organization. So David Dunworth is the chair of the Center Vision Board of Directors, and he's got an extensive background in marketing. David, you got a comment or question for uh, Carl? Well, the, the, the comment is you're absolutely right. Uh, at least as far as my knowledge goes, I'm, I'm weak in video. I'll be candid. Uh, I'm more in the direct response copy. I can write copy for video. Producing video? I don't think so. I don't. I have a face for radio. And I'm sure that that's what keeps a lot of small businesses afraid, the fear of the camera or how their own personal, how they come across. They're not photogenic or whatever. They look like me. And you know, that's how it goes, but, but you're right, you know, and I wanted to touch on something that you mentioned uh, to reinforce it is that, yeah, you've got to know who your market, who you're targeting uh, for that video, what's your, what's your why, and then you've got to figure out the message, uh, the market, then you get your message. And then you put your media, you, like you said, it may be better to be on all the platforms than just a few of them or who um, YouTube is probably a must and the others may be, maybe your, your market doesn't live there. So, yeah, I, I think uh, you are dead on and it sounds like you have got it all figured out. That's great. Thank you. Well, thank you, David. Uh, and you're you're a lot better looking than you think. Uh, so don't worry. I'm sure I'm sure you'll do fine when it comes to the videos. But I'll address that comment that you made because that is the biggest roadblock to people wanting to make YouTube videos. They will often say something like exactly what you just said. And my response is always, "Don't you talk to people already anyway? Aren't you already the face of your organization? Aren't you the person they already deal with? So guess what? They already know what you look like." They already know what you sound like. They don't care whether you are bald or tall or short or whatever. If you're already communicating with them and you've already got an audience or even if you have a small one, whatever it might be, you have people that will be okay with who you are. They are already okay with who you are. But obviously going on video, there's a, you know, a little different element to it. And so that's something that I work with my clients on as well, as I help them to become better on video to say, hey, look, you can't just talk like normal. You do actually have to bring a little more energy. You do need that feedback of someone that actually knows, okay, yeah, try this, try this, you know, do that better. Bring more. So that is an, a skill that anyone can learn. But we're talking about people who are in the clergy, people who are in nonprofits, they're already talking to people. They're already out there talking to people. There's, for me, it, it, there's no reason why they couldn't translate that into videos and guess what? Build that audience and that relationship 24 seven. That's what these videos allow them to do is that they can be found at any time. Someone might come home super late at night, they're gonna watch some YouTube videos or they go to your website, they start building a relationship. 
there is a, a someone that I know, a client of mine, who is not in the space or in the financial uh, planning space, but they say to me, he said to me last week, again, he was talking to a new client and the client suddenly interjected and said, I, I just got to tell you, I chose you because of your videos. I feel like I already know you, like we're sitting here talking now, but I already feel like I know you. And he said to me again, that is that warm lead that I got from just the relationship that I built. And same with me, when people talk to me after they've seen my videos, oftentimes the first thing they say is, it's so weird, but I feel like I know you already. So that is the, that's how much pow more powerful these things are. That's why I'm always like, get on the video. You have no reason not to be on video, especially if you're talking to people. Don't worry about it. So Carl, we're just about to the end of this short interview. This should, we could go for hours. It's just the depth of your knowledge is incredible. And there's so many nuances and it's very clear. One size doesn't fit everybody. Um, so talk about this. There's a, give us a, Quick update, using videos for fundraising. Is there, you got any advice on that? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, number one, as David mentioned, know who you're talking to, uh, for sure. Know who you're talking to. Um, you know, also look at multiple videos, building that emotional connection with your audience, right? As you guys know, it is really about the cause and the way people feel that will motivate them to, to donate to be to want to be a part of your cause. So really understanding what that is, it's probably not as you know, sure, you like I know, you've mentioned many times to you where you definitely have to ask for the sale, you know, it's not any different than any sort of other sale, you just have to ask them. And you're not doing anything bad. I mean, that is, you know, what supports the cause kind of thing. So ultimately, it's building the relationship again. So if you're thinking about fundraising, and you're thinking we need, you know, money in September, you better start thinking about it now, or you should have started thinking about it early on to build that relationship, to build that connection with people, build that community so that you're continuously adding to that. And you're and, and by doing that, you're actually adding value to their lives as well. I think that's the biggest thing with using videos is you want to make sure you're adding some sort of value to them to make them feel like, okay, yes, this is, this is my, I don't want to say tribe, but this is my tribe. These are the people that I identify with. These are the people that I want to support. And I'm more than happy to, you know, open my wallet whenever you know, the call it has been, has been, has been, you know, uh, has been brought forth to me, I will, I will open my wallet to them. So is there, any, is there, are there mistakes? Yes, absolutely. Things we talked about earlier, definitely mistakes, thinking one size fits all that, you know, one video will do the trick. So again, it's just that building it up slowly over time. And again, it's just learning from the mistakes, and figuring out what will work best and, and, and going from there. And, and again, it, it's, I would, I would, I would say, you know, absolutely, you need, you know, four types of videos, you absolutely need an introduction video to your organization, what you stand for, what you, what you, what you mean, what you, what you mean to other people, what you're trying to do, your mission. Uh, absolutely some sort of FAQs about, okay, hey, this is what we're trying to do. This is why we're doing it. it you know, how does it work? What, what, how does the money, where's the money go? Um, you know, maybe testimonials from people who have been affected by what you do, who have had positive experiences with what you do to show that, hey, yeah, there's other people just like you, you know, that have, that have support us or, you know, these people are, these people you've impacted. Uh, and then going into, okay, exactly what you do, maybe more specifically, the programs you offer, the, you know, the help that you do provide and providing that sort of well-rounded, you know, picture so that when you do present to people, they, they understand what you're trying to do and it's easier for them to say, oh, okay, yeah, I have a, here you go, <laughs> cha-ching. <laughs> oh, Kwan, um his website, kwanmultimedia.com, kwanmultimedia.com. When you go there, um, you'll see just different tabs. There's a contact tab, and it, it, people contact you. Or what, what can they do? What can they, conversation can they have with you, Carl? They can absolutely come and talk to me, and we will have a free consultation for any, anyone that is listening to this right now. If they want to come and talk to me about videos, talk to me about their organization, answer any questions they might have. If they contact me, I will be more than happy to give them, you know, half an hour of my time to say, hey, look, you know, if you have questions about what you're trying to do, they're not working. They are, they're, they're, they're working, but not as well. Uh, you don't know where to start. Uh, please come and, you know, talk to me about those things, and I'd be more than happy to chat with anyone. Yeah, yeah, we can all do videos, but you know, if you want them done right, um, it's probably more cost effective to hire a professional like Carl. So go to quanmultimedia.com 
And you might as well get it right the first time than spend years trying to figure it out like I have. So Carl, learned a lot today. Thank you so much for being our guest today on the Nonprofit Exchange. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you for watching the Nonprofit Exchange.